हेलो माय डियर वॉरियर्स रेडी टू क्रैक जे एडवांस फ्रॉम आई रोडो टॉप क्वेश्चंस फॉर जे एडवांस 2022 वेलकम वेलकम नमस्कार ओला बॉन जोर सत श्री अकाल मरहबा गुड इवनिंग माय डियर वॉरियर्स टाइम टू बैटल इट आउट finally the results are out for all the j mains aspirants and i'm pretty sure some of you might be disappointed some of you might be like okay we need to move on some of you might be like okay i have got a good mark i need to just focus on iit so guys this is for all the students who want to improve their scores in j e advance and i erodo is one of the top notch books which is very popular and has been used over the ages right from my times even my seniors my teachers and you and i'm pretty sure your next generation will also use this book because this has top notch conceptual questions and specifically for je advance and olympiads so time to start this there is one more book called as croto so in the last few days of your je advance preparation just do questions from erodo and do questions of pyq and the coaching assignments and material and hc varma these are more than sufficient for cracking j advance let's begin with the class my name is shreyas those of you do not know me and i have been training kids for more than a decade and i am very happy that many of my kids are in the top notch institutes and i know what it takes all you need to do is regular practice systematic study and certain materials only you should study that's more than enough to crack j and get into your dream iit with your dream branch all right so let's begin with the class and thank you for all the likes and the shares as well as the subscribes so guys this is a english medium channel for all the competitive exam preparation so make sure you have smashed the like as well as the subscribe button all right so let's begin hello aishwarya hello everyone so uh, even if you are a 12th standard student or a 11th standard student you can watch it today's questions i have kept it predominantly from the 11th standard side but uh, you will see that these questions are well chosen and you will develop new thinking abilities and open up your mind towards newer and newer ways and you know methodologies of solving problems are you guys ready for the session awesome 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 i okay so let's begin guys waiting from so long says akshay chal let's begin here is the first question coming up on your screen so i have put the question number from erodo as well over here like you can see this is problem number 1.17 <clears throat> and you can see that there is a point a on the highway and one has to get by a car as soon as possible to point b which is on the field at a distance l from the highway it is known that the car moves in the field eta times slower than on the highway at what distance from point d one must turn off the highway let's understand the question over here good evening sai now see over here this is the highway the car is traveling with certain speed and that speed is much higher let us just say that over here that the speed with which it travels is v and it is much higher than on the field this is the field this is the highway the moment you go on the field you will walk or maybe the car slows down so your speed is eta times or n times slower and let us say over here in this particular path specially the speed the speed is nothing but v by n because it is eta times slower or v by eta now the problem is if you move too much over here closer towards d d is the point which is on the perpendicular on the highway then what happens you will be spending a lot of time on the highway with very high speed you will be traveling a very small distance a very small distance in the field in the field your speed is considerably lower you have to reach point b in the smallest time as soon as possible as soon as possible means smallest time if you travel here you might travel a large distance with good speed but you are traveling a very large distance if you stop right over here and go in the field like this think about it if you go directly in the field you are going very slowly and you are traveling the smallest distance but the time taken will be large if you travel somewhat over here and then go in the field 
may be the time will be slightly better because you are traveling with higher speed you are moving little bit forward and then going little bit less distance in the slower region but who knows where that point is because if i just travel like this with the uh, high speed and then go like this you might think sir this is very good sir because i'm traveling really high speed as much as possible and very small distance with very less speed that might not be the best or the optimum solution to this problem because you are traveling a very large distance you're traveling a very large distance and this is a real life problem you know you can reach a particular point by the shortest path like this but because of the traffic you take a longer route but you don't take such a long route with very high speed where you end up spending more time traveling so this path you travel with very high speed but the path length is itself very long do you guys understand this do you guys understand this thank you gy engineering and builders thank you so much so you need to optimize that point now where is that point i do not know so let me just assume it let me just assume it so let us just assume that that point from where you are going to turn to optimize the time is at a distance x this is l obviously this length this length will be nothing but root of l square plus x square and so on and so forth everybody with me on this awesome now what is the total time taken to go from a to c to b let's try to figure that out the time taken to go from the time taken to go from a to c to b will be the time taken to go from a to c plus the time taken the time taken to go from a to c plus the time taken to go from c to b now what is the time taken to go from a to c time is distance by speed what is the distance well 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 i do not know uh, how much is this total distance i do not know how much is that particular distance i am just going to assume this whole thing as some alphabet let's say a some variable a so that will be nothing but a minus x that will be nothing but a minus x time is distance by speed so speed is just v then what i will do the time will be distance by speed again the distance is nothing but root of l square plus x square speed now is v by eta now what you are going to do whatever time you get from a to c to b i want to make it minimum as possible i need to find x so that t is minimum so our aim is to find that x to make to make the time minimum that means you need to take derivative dt by dx is zero this is for minima or maxima and then you will solve the problem to find x and then you will get the value of time or i think just the question is find a distance not a time so you can find the value of x but you can see that this derivative is going to be a very painful derivative if you do this method in j advance you are going to spend a lot of time you are going to waste a lot of time and you will not get enough time to complete the paper this is not the right way to do this i mean in the exam at home fair enough you can do it you can you have all the time in the world you can do it in the exam no you will waste a lot of time so now i'm going to teach you a new concept completely completely new concept what is that new concept it's fermat's principle now what does fermat say is that whenever light has to travel from one point to what light yeah, yeah hold on whenever light has to travel from one point to other it takes the shortest time path whenever light has to travel from any point to another point it will take the shortest time path that is called as fermat's principle so fermat's rule or fermat's principle is remember that light always travels not in the shortest distance light travels right travels in shortest shortest time path not in shortest path shortest time path the time which is least so imagine you have two different medium you have one point here one point here this is point 1 point 2 if light has to go from point 1 to point 2 it will go something like this it bends this path is the shortest time basically refraction if the medium is same 
If the medium is same, then you will see that it will go in a straight line. But it bends because it has to travel in a shortest time when the medium is different. Now you might be wondering what has light got to do with this question? Well, there is a lot of things that you can learn. See these ants. Are you able to see these ants? They know how to solve this question, Irodo question. Do you see that there is a tile here? It's a floor and this is a rough mat. Where do you think the speed of the ant is higher? Where do you think the speed of the ant is higher? Is it higher here or here? Obviously on the floor, it is moving fast. On the mat, it is rough. So it is going to move slower. The ant wants to reach its target. Maybe there is some sugar or some sweet lying on the floor, on the mat. It wants to reach there as soon as possible. So guess what the ant is going to do? It will follow what light would do, what light would do if it had to travel from the floor to the mat. Think light is traveling at the speed of ant. Yeah, think of a very high refractive index. This has some refractive index. This has some refractive index. What would light do? It will do exactly the same thing. So what you will see is if light were to travel from this point to this point, it's as if the light will get refracted here. And guess what? I'm not even kidding over here. This is your angle of incidence. This is your angle of refraction and sine of i by sine of r will be nothing but your refractive index which is nothing but speed of the ant in the first medium upon speed of the ant in the second medium and this has been practically demonstrated actually ants do that in reality crazy right have you blown is your mind blown right now you are going to use light to solve the problem. Light takes the shortest time to travel from this point to this point. And this is angle of incidence. This is angle of refraction. Great, right? So let's use that principle and let's try to solve the question. So let's drop a perpendicular guys. First of all, <coughs> let's drop a perpendicular. I hope you see this is nothing but medium one. This is nothing but your medium, medium two. And how is light going? Observe carefully. Light is going like this and it goes like this. I feel this is like the grazing incidence. This is like the grazing incidence. Like this is basically your 90 degree and this is your angle of refraction. If this is R, obviously this is also R. Now light will go such that it will follow the laws of refraction, Snell's law. So think light has to travel at the speed of the car on the highway and then it travels at the speed of the car or the person on the field. Crazy, right? So now let's try to solve the same question and see what happens. So using Snell's law and Fermat principle, using Fermat and Snell's law and Snell's law, what will you get is sine of i, which is sine 90 by sine of r will be nothing but will be nothing but sine of i by sine of r will be nothing but speed in the first medium, speed in the first medium upon speed in the second medium. Sine 90 is one, sine of r you can figure it out. I just assumed this as x, this is l. So naturally this will be l square plus x square. So sine of r will be opposite by, uh, by hypotenuse, which is nothing but root of l square plus x square is equal to speed in the first case is v in the second case is v by n v v will cancel so this will go on the top so what will you get root of l square plus x square divided by x is nothing but eta square both sides and solve see what do you get you will get l square plus x square by x square is nothing but n square or eta square so l square plus x square is n square x square take it on the other side so L square will be X square eta square minus one. Bring it on below. So X square will be L square by eta square minus one. Solving it further, take a root on both sides. So X will be L divided by root of eta square minus one. That is our final answer. And I feel this is the easiest way to do the question. Did you love the question? Fermat's principle. That's it. That is the answer. So what is the principle? The principle says whenever light has to travel from one point to other point, it takes the path which takes shortest time, not shortest distance. And light would travel such that it will change. If it changes medium, it will obey Snell's law. 
whenever you see medium changes or whenever you see speed changes and the question is on the shortest time like you can have a question on there is a bank and there is a river in the river the speed of the swimmer is so much on the bank the speed is so much if the swimmer has to travel from this point to this point in shortest time how will you solve use snell's law for solving that question everybody cool with this can we go ahead to the next question okay so i have taken a lot of time to and invested a lot of time to explain you this and i have told you why you are not going to use uh, this method in the examination let's move on to the next question now <coughs> that's the answer <coughs> yeah sure salva i will do that and by the way the pdf will be available in the telegram channel make sure you join it next question coming up on your screen problem 1.119 the question says there is a locomotive of mass m starts moving so that the velocity varies according to the law v is a root s a is the constant not acceleration s is the displacement so question is find the work done by all the forces which are acting in the first t seconds after the motion begins thank you so much welcome j aspirant and we will continue to support all the outgoing students till the counseling ends don't worry so let's try to do this first of all there is a speed which varies with uh, this particular equation a is a constant now i know i will need to differentiate or integrate because i can see velocity and root of s and all of that so i don't want to confuse this a with acceleration so i will rephrase this equation like this i will just rephrase this equation as speed is equal to alpha into root of s so that i do not confuse this a and the acceleration by chance okay now we want to find the work done in order to find the work done i can integrate force with displacement but mass is not given force i have to find out by acceleration another way is kinetic energy i think that will be easy because kinetic energy change is the work done finding kinetic energy might be simpler but the problem is the question says find it as a function of time time here speed is as a function of displacement so i think i need to re rewrite velocity in terms of time i think then i will get it how do i rewrite velocity as a function of time and not displacement maybe i need to make use of integration or derivatives let's try to see what we can do velocity is nothing but ds by dt rate of change of displacement is velocity is nothing but alpha into root of s i can immediately see s s are similar time i can shift it there bring all the similar variables on one side so this will become s raised to minus half into ds will be alpha into dt now the moment all the variables are separated of similar kinds i think it's easier to integrate so let's try to integrate yep so what do we do so it will be s raised to minus half ds is equal to alpha dt and integrate here as well as here it is clearly mentioned it starts moving and the uh, velocity varies from the beginning so right from zero there is no displacement at time t there is some displacement oh sorry there is some displacement so i'm just going to put s over here so integration of s raised to minus half what will it be guys it will be s raised to minus half plus 1 which is plus half upon n plus 1 which is again plus half into uh, sorry that ds is gone that's okay uh, is equal to alpha into t if you are wondering what happened to the limits it's going to be s minus 0 and this will be t minus 0 so it will come out to be the same thing no need of worrying about it so s raised to half is root of s this 2 goes on the top comes over here below so alpha by 2 into t interesting so i got root s is alpha by 2 into t now i know v is alpha root s i know v is nothing but alpha root s from this i'll get v is equal to alpha into alpha by 2 into t so therefore it will become alpha square t by 2 is nothing but the speed so that is what the value of speed in terms of time is now the last part the question is what is the work done now the work done is nothing but the change in kinetic energy which is half m final speed square minus 0 because it starts moving means initial speed was 0 let's try to do this so work will be nothing but half into m into speed square that means alpha square t by 2 whole square so this will become m alpha raised to 4 into t square 2 square is 4 4 2 are 8 that is the answer i guess yep that is the answer this is t square 
that's it <coughs> aisha many many happy returns of the day bachcha no problem belated wishes and i hope you had a great day on saturday especially the weekend you keep enjoying bachcha all right so yes definitely ishan you will definitely improve that's a um, uh, that's a drastic oh 115 and 184 that's an advanced test that's good that's good keep it up yep yes sejumar parthi and definitely bachcha that's what we are here in fact i conducted an interview today of one student who has been following us and uh, right now uh, after 12th he started studying he took a drop and he got 98.5 percentile so hats off to him so guys there are many students who are following us and are getting you know amazing ranks some of them are silent some of them are probably you know coming to our notice so i'm pretty sure we are making a huge difference in many kids lives so keep following keep uh, seeing our videos definitely you will improve so that is the answer moving on to the next question ready here it comes beautiful question on pendulum 4.43 question there is a pendulum constructed as a light thin walled sphere of radius r filled up with water and suspended at a point o from the rigid rod such that uh, the distance between the point o and the center of the sphere is l so that distance from center to point o suspension is l how many times will the small oscillation of such a pendulum change if the water freezes viscosity has to be ignored freezing change of volume has to be ignored radius is r okay interesting question thin walled that means the mass of the sphere has to be neglected okay now let's see how do we solve this so deepak probably i'll answer that question towards the end or maybe you can leave a comment after the video because right now we are completely focused on ga advanced all right this solving this question actually so what do we do first case remember the water has not yet freeze the water is in liquid form just think about it if the water is in liquid form it is surrounded by this solid sphere as the pendulum oscillates i don't think the water will rotate that is going to make a big difference because when the water freezes it will stick to the surfaces and once the pendulum oscillates the chunk of that water which has frozen will also go back and forth like this it will also rotate in the first case when in liquid form what is going to happen is this is that pendulum it will go like this if the orientation of water was like this no matter where that pendulum is you will see the orientation of water will be exactly like that but after freezing after freezing what will happen is that if by chance the ice has a orientation like this here it will be like this here it will be like this it's stuck it will go like this what difference does that make keep this in mind the difference it makes is in the moment of inertia or whether it is a physical pendulum or a simple pendulum you guys only tell me in the chat box i think one of them is a simple pendulum and one of them is a physical pendulum you only quickly think and tell me which one is a simple pendulum which one is a physical pendulum which one is a simple pendulum which one is a physical pendulum i want to see how many of you are using your brains come on <coughs> deepak don't cry bachcha i'm going to answer you just leave a comment after the video ends so all the percentiles and the cutoffs etc depends on your uh, category as well as you know the current cutoff so let's see guys the thing is if you realize this case is a simple pendulum this case is a physical pendulum think about it why is this a simple pendulum because the water size has no role to play in it no matter how big that chunk of water is no we study exactly opposite the first is simple no matter how big that chunk of that water is the water does not exert any kind of torque it's as if the entire mass of that water is concentrated at the center and it's like a point mass suspended on a string it is going to behave like a simple pendulum so the rotation of water is not there the water stays like this 
दिस इज सिंपल पेंडुलम दिस इज बेसिकली लाइक अ सिंपल पेंडुलम सिंपल पेंडुलम एंड इट्स एज इफ द एंटायर मास वॉज कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड एग्जैक्टली ओवर ह्योर एट द सेंटर बिकॉज द साइज ऑफ द वॉटर हैज नो रोल टू प्ले ओवर ह्योर इनफैक्ट दिस इज गिवन टू बी एल सो द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ ऑसोलेशन इन द फर्स्ट केस विल बी टू पाई अंडर रूट एल बाई जी सी दिस इज मेकिंग सेंस एवरीबडी विद मी ऑन दिस The time period will be two pi under root l by g. There will be no no role of that water. Okay, think of it this way. Think of it this way. When the pendulum is here, there will be some torque acting on it. One is mg cos theta, one is mg sin theta, and this water is free to rotate. This water is not a part of this rigid body. It is not a part of this rigid body. It's like a freely rotating disc. or freely rotating sphere which can rotate no matter where the pendulum is it can do whatever it wants the rotation of that water has no role to play over there no matter how that water is oriented how big it is so that is why it is like a simple pendulum this is very very crucial these kind of concepts by the way has come in j advance now what's the next thing for after freezing now it behaves like a rigid body because the orientation is changing it's changing so it is behaving like one complete body it's as if a solid sphere is attached to a rod this is going to be a physical pendulum physical or a compound pendulum and in case of a physical or a compound pendulum the time period of oscillation is given by 2 pi under root moment of inertia by m into g into distance of the center from the suspension point let's try to write what is the moment of inertia so the moment of inertia this is the second case let me make this as the first case so in the second case moment of inertia of the sphere about this point not just 2 by 5 mr square if you just write 2 by 5 mr square that is obviously going to be wrong you have to shift it by using which theorem parallel axis theorem so about this point it is 2 by 5 if you shift it here it will be plus m l square and this whole thing divided by m g as well as d now this d is nothing but l itself so m g l now you just divide the two now you just divide the two so just try this out so t1 uh, is equal to this divided by this or t1 by t2 so t1 by t2 just try out what and all terms will be there what and all terms will not be there 2 pi 2 pi cancels 2 by 2 by cancels. So here I will have root of l by g, and from t2 side, because t2 will be this entire thing, I will have in the denominator this whole number 2 by 5 m r square plus m l square, and this m g l will go on the top. M g l will go on the top. M g l will go on the top. Now it's just a matter of cancelling few things, and you will get the answer. That's all. Like over here. M M M goes off, right? And I can also see this G and this G also goes off. Now L and L will become L square, I suppose. So this will become nothing but root of L into L is L square. Whole thing divided by two by five R square plus L square. If you want, you can take L square below also. And if you want, you can write T one over here, and this is T two over here. Write L square below. See what happens. You will get this as Uh, just one second. I'll just write it better. Okay, one by root of two by five r square by l square plus one. I think this is a better way of looking at it because if you shift l square below, r r square by l square, l square by l square is just one. So hence you will get the value of t two. Hence you will get the value of t two. So how much will be t two? T two will be nothing but t two will be nothing but t one times. Root of two by five r square by l square plus one. So how many times does it change? It changes this many times. So this is our final answer. It changes this many times. Two by five r square by l square plus one. Did you guys love this question? Yes or no? Come on, guys. Yep. Can we say two is rigid, so it is physical? Yes, Avi. You can say that exactly, exactly. So whenever things rotate. as if it is attached 
that is a physical pendulum but when things are free to move it will that that spin of that disc or that sphere has no contribution in the torque or its inertia so don't worry about such things then treat it like a point mass basically a simple pendulum so that's the concept over here <coughs> moving on to another question will j 11th pro light batch syllabus will go on to complete yeah it will complete much before that mohit official it depends on when you join if you join very late it will end late but if you have joined in july or august it will end before march only okay problem 4.62 in a cylinder filled with an ideal gas both sides a piston of mass m cross sectional area s in equilibrium position divides the cylinder into two equal parts volume v naught and gas pressure is p naught on both sides if you move the piston slightly then what will happen is it will oscillate question is find the oscillation frequency beautiful question let's try to do this first of all initially we have pressure p naught volume v naught pressure p naught volume v naught this is entirely at equilibrium completely at equilibrium let's try to move it let's say i move this mass over here so the piston has moved slightly over here let's say okay and let's say the displacement is basically delta x how much is the displacement it is delta x because of which what will happen is the pressure will change here and here here the gas will expand so the pressure will reduce by delta p and here the pressure will increase by delta p the volume will also change obviously the volume here will increase by delta v and here the volume will decrease by delta v now because the pressure has lowered here and the pressure has increased over there that creates a net force that creates a net force so that force if you notice because the pressure has increased on this side and the pressure has decreased on this side the net force will try to pull it back yep just try to observe this here the pressure has become increased here the pressure has decreased low pressure high pressure high pressure will push it so you will notice that there will be a net force and this net force is restoring because it is opposite to the disturbance that will pull it back and that is why you will see that it will oscillate so the question is now to figure out the relation between these two how do we do that well we cannot do it directly but via pressure we can do it force is related to pressure pressure is related to volume volume might be related to displacement what is the relation between pressure and volume well if you notice there is a very important line in this question that is the most important thing guys it's an adiabatic process frictionless that means reversible so it's a reversible adiabatic process so what do we do well use the standard standard formula if pressure changes volume changes the ratio is given by gamma times pressure by volume standard delta p by delta v is negative gamma times value of the pressure by volume you would have seen this in slope of pressure volume curves slope of pressure volume in isotherm and adiabatic adiabatic has gamma times more slope and isotherm do you remember this everybody everybody how many of you remember this dp by dv is the slope of a pv graph and that is gamma times p by v if you remember this well done if you don't remember it go back revise your thermo concepts it's clearly mentioned over there everybody with me hello sagar welcome aboard so now this delta p and this delta v we are going to use it so what i'm going to do is delta p will be minus gamma times pressure and volume at that instant was p not and v not and this delta v goes over here change in the pressure will cause change in the force change in the pressure will cause change in the force pressure is force by area so this will be nothing but the change in the force divided by the area area of cross section is s is minus gamma times p not by v not what will be the change in volume come on what will be the change in volume how many of you remember it think volume will change because of this motion area is s displacement is delta x area into displacement you will see a cylinder 
area into displacement will be a thin cylinder over there. So that is the change in volume. So area is nothing but S and displacement is delta X. Great. So delta F is equal to minus gamma P naught by V naught S square delta X. This force is directly proportional to X. So this is like a restoring force restoring force from one side from any one side and this was nothing but your displacement this minus sign tells you that it is restoring in nature it's exactly opposite now the last part what will be the net force if the force from one side is delta f this will push it, this will pull it. This is like lower pressure, so vacuum-like force will pull it. And this side will push it. So hence, what will be the net force, guys? What will be the net force? This net force will be twice of delta P. Exactly twice of that. So hence, it will be minus 2 times of gamma P naught S square by V naught into delta X. Now you can see clearly this is like, just like F is equal to minus KX. This is just like it. You can clearly see what is K over here. This entire term is your spring constant. And we all know that the time period of a spring mass system is 2 pi under root M by K. That's it. You will get the answer now. Just put K as that. But I think the question was frequency. So uh, frequency will be 1 by T. That's all. So you can find any one of them. So this will be nothing but time period will be 2 pi under root mass of the piston by K is this entire term. Minus sign should not be taken. This minus is just to tell you it is restoring. So 2 times of gamma P naught S square and then you will go V naught on the top. So that is it. You will get the answer. This is time period. You will also get frequency. So frequency will be 1 by the time period. If omega is asked, you can get that also. So that will be 2 pi by t. So you can find that. This is how it is. Okay. <coughs> uh, hi, I will be able to reply to your doubts probably towards the end of the class. Right now we are going with the flow. If you're okay with this question, then we'll move ahead. This 2 is a very important number. Many people miss that 2. Why is that 2 there? Because both sides will apply the pressures. And that is why force from this side and this side will add, not subtract. Because here pressure increases, so it pushes. Here the pressure decreases, so it pulls. So pull and push in the same way it is going to add up. Loving it, Gargi. I'm so glad. I'm very good, Shreya Sir's fan club president. Okay, moving on to the next question. I have, I think, one or two more questions. Let's do this, guys. It's brilliant question coming up on your screen. There are very difficult ways of solving this, but I don't like solving it in a difficult way because in the exam, you don't have to solve it in the difficult manner. You have to think in the shortest, quickest time. You have to complete many questions. 1.322, what work should be done in order to push this piston to squeeze all the water out of the cylinder? It's horizontal. And... By applying a constant force, the volume of the water is V, cross-sectional area is S, uh, and S is, uh, this is very small as compared to the area of the piston, the friction and viscosity are negligible. Very beautiful question. Let's try to do this. Let's assume some variables, maybe this area, maybe this area is, let's say, A, maybe you're applying a force of F. And you are moving this piston by a distance of L, let's say. The water will come out with certain speed. Uh, let us just assume that the water will come out with speed, let's say, small v, like this. And it will go out. Great. Question is, find the work done. Now, to find the work done, all right? Now, what is the work done by that force? Okay. In order to find that work, I think I need to find the force. If I find the force, I know the displacement, I think I can find the work easily. So to find the force, what can I do? Oh, this is a liquid problem. In liquids, usually we deal with pressures. So I don't think I know the force, but I think I can find the pressure. If I know the pressure of the liquid, I think I can easily get what is the force. Because pressure is force by area. 
right let's do this first of all this liquid inside will have some pressure right and i would say this pressure is eventually getting converted into kinetic energy pressure energy is getting converted into kinetic energy think of bernoulli there is pressure over here and finally it is coming out if you use bernoulli theorem if you use bernoulli's if you use bernoulli's principle you will see that the pressure here this is extra pressure from the atmospheric do not forget that this pressure is over and above the atmospheric this is that excess pressure so p plus p not this is basically that excess pressure is the term on the left hand side plus zero because this is moving with very small speed i think it is clearly mentioned it is moving with uh, it is applied by a constant force and uh, you have to neglect everything work done in order to squeeze the entire water yes this is very small this is very large so it's just like your torsolis theorem the water comes down slowly the speed of that water is very small and the speed which with which the water comes out is very large so here that kinetic energy will be negligible you can neglect it and rho gh term is also zero i'm taking this as my horizontal line is equal to pressure outside is p not kinetic energy will be half rho into speed square plus rho gh term will be zero okay from this p not p not cancels i will see that the excess pressure is nothing but half rho into speed square interesting once i know that pressure which is excess that excess pressure is being balanced by this force think why if there is atmospheric pressure that atmospheric pressure is anyways balanced from atmospheric pressure from the outside this excess pressure will be balanced by this force everybody with me on this p plus p not is the total pressure p is the excess pressure so p not p not anyways cancels p from this side will be balanced by that force so think about it can i not write p is nothing but force divided by that area which is a is equal to half into rho into speed square speed well can i do something about it maybe maybe i can do something about it well let me think about that as well in a bit i'll just write it here so force will be half rho i have speed square and i also have area over here i also have area over here okay maybe i need to do something about all these terms let's try to get rid of that area because that area was an assumed variable and speed is not known so both these terms need to be substituted how do i do that let's try this out think guys when the liquid will eventually come out like this it's like a long cylinder it's like a long cylinder whatever volume was here it finally squeezes out through this thin cylinder it's a long cylinder whatever volume was there here is the volume of this thin long cylinder agree or disagree guys this session is on advance so diksha and others so please try to concentrate on the advance questions we'll take em sat and other doubts maybe later on so the entire volume is squeezed out in that thin long cylinder great so this volume so look at this what am i trying to say over here this volume inside that cylinder is basically the volume of that long thing which will be area of cross section s into the length s into this length maybe i'll just call it as x s multiplied by x which is of that thin long uh, you know stream that has come out now volume of the cylinder is capital v by the way is equal to s into x what will be x x is the distance traveled by that thin cylinder x will be nothing but speed into time for which it comes out x will be nothing but speed into time distance is speed into time right makes sense everybody with me on this so just write instead of x you're just going to put speed into time that's all great 
So I have replaced volume as SVT. Interesting. So from this, I got speed is equal to volume by S into T. Okay, I'm just going to put it over here as volume by S into T. And, uh, oh, sorry, that has to be squared. My bad. So sorry, guys. <coughs> volume by S into T, the whole square. Now, the only problem is with this area time, area term. So what do we do with this area? Well, 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 think, think carefully. Is there a way to write this area in terms of volume? I think so we can do that. I think so we can do that. How do we do that? <coughs> think guys, can I write this area in terms of this volume? I think so. This area is this volume and this length relate, uh, it's related to this. How? This entire volume, this entire volume is also this complete area into the distance by which you have moved the piston. L into area of cross section is this volume. So hence, from this you will get area is volume divided by length L. So just put that over here, V by L. Okay, great. Let's try to solve the question now and see what do we get. We will get F is equal to, F is equal to half rho, half rho. You have V square into V, that means volume cube divided by S square T square, S square T square into length L. Shift this length L over here because F into length will be work in the next step. So half rho volume cube by S square T square force into the length is the work. So that is your work done. So that is your work done, which will be half rho V cube. That's a volume cube divided by a cross sectional square into time square. That is your final answer. Avi, I'll tell you why. See, the liquid is coming out with speed V. Okay, think of it like a train. Train is coming out with speed V. And after time T, what will be the length of that stream or that train? It will be speed into time. Speed into time will give you the length. So that is why that long stream of water which has come out, the length of it is speed into time for which it has come out. I hope that is clear. Halliday Resnick is a very good, book, very good book, Tanush, for concepts and basic understanding, definitely. But the problems are not so relevant. Awesome. So beautiful question. A lot of people think we need to use integration or derivatives. No need of derivatives. Luckily for us, because uh, you know everything turned out to be very simple. Okay. Moving on to the last question of today, and here it is. But I'm not going to solve the entire question. I'm just going to do a part of it. The second part, I'm going to give it to you as a homework. So I'm going to solve the first half. Second half, you're going to do it. Let's try to do this. Well, uh, there is a problem, 1.54. A cylinder rolls over a horizontal plane without slipping. The radius of the cylinder is R. Find the radius of curvature of the part traveled by A and B. First of all, uh, this is a cylinder which is rolling. The path traveled by A and B is not circular, is something what you need to understand. What is the reason behind it? Everybody knows any point on a rolling surface goes like this. This point might go like that. So every point goes like this. This is called as a cycloidal path. This is a cycloidal path. So a cycloidal path might have a very different radius of curvature. It is not going to be R. So the question is basically, what is the radius of curvature of a cycloid? Crazy. Now, in general, many people use a mathematical formula for finding the radius of curvature. That can be used only if you know the equation of the path. Number one, the equation of this cycloid is going to be crazy. Number one. Number two, the derivative process of finding the radius of curvature using that crazy formula is even more lengthier. That is going to waste a lot of time. See, we are studying physics, not maths. In maths, yeah, it might be a very beautiful problem. But for physics, I wouldn't like it so much. So what's the best way of doing it? So what is the way in which you find the radius of curvature? See guys, whenever you have a path, whenever you have a path of any random shape, size, whatever, and you want to find the radius of curvature, meaning you're thinking, let's say at this point, 
you're trying to think had there been an imaginary circle what would be the radius of it what would be the radius of it and the way you go about that problem is at this point you know that the velocity is always going to be along the tangent drawn to the path this point there might be some acceleration so maybe i'll just show the acceleration like this this acceleration will have two components one component will be here this will be the tangential one there will be another component that will be the centripetal one remember centripetal acceleration is related to the radius of curvature of that circle at that instant this is an instantaneous circle you have taken a small arc bent it into a circle every instant the radius will be different so ac will be nothing but ac will be nothing but v square divided by v square divided by r this is the formula that you're going to use somehow find the acceleration towards the center if you know the speed you will find the radius this is the best way to do that <coughs> yep let's do this now okay this is the concept i put it on the next slide i'm going to go back now do i know the velocity of that point do i know the velocity of that point yes i think so if you remember this was also a standard concept in case of rolling motion this point this point any point if you see they all move as if they are rotating about this point remember this was a standard kind of a question so this is how the velocities look like here the velocity will be omega r at the topmost point it is twice omega r this is pure rotation your rotational point about the bottom most point it feels as if the entire rolling sphere at that instant is rotating about the bottom most point at the next instant a new point comes and it rotates about that point and it continues next and next point <coughs> you are why don't you leave the question uh, after the uh, you know session is over why definitely i'll try and reply to it bachcha i'm concentrating on the question i don't want to lose focus so is this point clear why the velocity at the topmost point is 2 omega okay this is standard remember this okay any points velocity you can find here it will be slightly more here it will be slightly less here it will be like this here it will be like this i think you would have seen this kind of concept before for pure rolling great so for point a i already know that the velocity at this point is nothing but 2 times of omega r okay oh but wait a minute that r is not capital r that is the small r that is the radius of the uh, sphere or the wheel and the path taken by it i know is a cycloid so it will go like this this is a cycloidal path great now comes the acceleration so for that guy what is the acceleration let's try to think about it point a is acceleration will be the acceleration of point a can be thought this way in vector form acceleration of a sitting on the center plus the acceleration of the center with respect to the ground why i do this is because the problem becomes simple if you sit on the center i will see that point a just going in a circular motion if i sit on the center and i am moving with it i am going to see the point a just performing circular motion like this and c for the ground frame will be going in a straight line path correct so it will be acceleration of point a with respect to c plus the acceleration of point c with respect to the ground now the acceleration of a with respect to c please remember this is pure circular motion this is circular motion it's just moving in a circle this acceleration of c with respect to the ground is a pure linear motion it's a pure linear motion everybody with me on this awesome now what is the acceleration of this point with respect to c or basically the circular motion's acceleration i think it is moving without slipping i am assuming the speed is constant so it does not have any tangential component it only has centripetal acceleration at that point the centripetal acceleration will be downwards so it will be minus omega square r j cap so downwards i hope that makes sense acceleration of the center will be zero because it is going with constant speed so i'm just going to put zero over here so that's it the acceleration of point a is minus omega square r 
जे क्या Now, if you rewind a little bit, you will realize that whatever acceleration you get, split it along the tangent, perpendicular to the tangent, and only consider the centripetal one. Now, the best part over here is the total acceleration already comes out to be perpendicular. The total acceleration already comes out to be perpendicular. That means this also just happens to be the centripetal acceleration. If this acceleration had some ijk components, then I would only worry about the component perpendicular to the tangent because that will be pointing towards the center. I hope this is fine. Great. So now that I know this is centripetal, let's use our formula. Centripetal acceleration is nothing but going to be v square divided by your r. So let's try to do this guys and see what do we get. Centripetal acceleration is nothing but omega square r. Please remember this r over here is the radius, radius of the wheel, small r. Whereas if you notice this r is exactly what you need to find radius of the curvature, radius of the curvature. Okay, now let's try to do this. What is the value of velocity? It is nothing but 2 omega r. So 2 omega r whole square and this whole thing divided by the radius. So bring r over here. So it will be 4 omega square r square divided by omega square r. So omega square omega square cancels. One of the r goes. So the answer will be 4 times of r. All other variables beautifully got cancelled. That is the answer for point A. I would love you guys to do it for point B and post up the answers in the comment section. The only thing is at this point, the velocity will be at an angle and acceleration, I don't know, you figure it out using a similar method. It will be acceleration of point B with respect to C, acceleration of C with respect to ground. Very similar concept. The only difference will be velocity of this point will be at an angle. That's all. Okay, everybody with me on this? So keep that in mind and try to solve the question. Beautiful questions that we have solved. Now these kind of questions are just the trailer, I would say, in Ekalavya batch. Many such questions will be um, uh, given to you, not just from Erodo, but from our own question bank. Some things which you never have seen. You will learn so many things which are much beyond mains, much beyond your board level, much beyond your any other exam, which is very important for J Advance. And that's the reason why so many of our kids have been able to crack J advance in the last year. 1,500 students cracked J just from Vedantu. It was almost nearing one, like seven to eight percent of the students entering into IITs. You will get this accelerator program free of cost, and you will get the topmost educators, and you will be able to analyze your test performance and see what is your strength, what is your weakness and different paper patterns are being made to solve along with doubt solving sessions from the complex to complex questions. So this uh, one month or not even one month, hardly 20 days can definitely make a huge difference in your scores of J advance. Make the best use of the free Ekalavya program. Right now there are theme based tests, there are test discussions, there are advanced pattern tests. There are rank prediction tests, multi-dimensional tests, exercises along with mock tests. Link is there in the description box below. This was just the trailer of Ekalavya, I would say. So Ekalavya is much more than this, guys. I would love you to solve these questions uh, more like this. So if you want to join Ekalavya, I think uh, there should have been an Ekalavya test link. Oh, I think it's not there over here. Okay, I will add it maybe later on. <coughs> I will add it. Okay. The Ekalava link should have been there, guys. I will add it later on. Don't worry about it. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this class. Everybody with me on this. Enjoyed the class. And you want more sessions? Then the only way I can conduct more classes is if you actually like, if you share, and you comment. Else, I don't think I will get the motivation to conduct more such classes on YouTube. Okay. Because it takes a lot of effort and time to discuss these questions. So, Hopefully you will understand and make sure that many of the students who have cleared mains and cutoffs and you will watch these sessions so that we can put forward our effort for these things. Okay. So understand we need your support to conduct these sessions and vice versa. You need our support so that you understand it better. Bye bye guys. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing it with your friends and your batchmates. Hasta la vista. This was Captain Shreyas signing off.